Today, Black Friday sales are already here. AMD's new notebook GPU is really impressive. Ryzen 8000 is amazing. AMD's next-gen APUs bring monster gaming performance. And NVIDIA's new GPUs get a release date. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, Black Friday deals are already here. You can see that even here on Newegg, they even are advertising Black Friday deals. This is their kind of pre-Black Friday event. And this is actually why I wanted to do a talking head video today because I wanted to get these out as quickly as I could because some of them are really good. And if you're interested in any of these, I will have affiliate links down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more, but they help the channel out. Either way, let's get right to it. Starting things off, we have AMD's 6-core, 12-thread CPU, the Ryzen 5 5500. Now, obviously, this is their last-generation CPUs, but it's just 100 bucks. Not a bad deal at all, and I will say it is ending soon. This one is by Cinetech, and that's because I do believe the main one is actually sold out, but there are other sellers on Newegg doing this deal, but you'll definitely want to act fast. Next up, NVMe drives are getting so much cheaper than pretty much ever before. As you can see right here, we have a very nice Samsung 990 Pro 2 terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 just $129.99. Then we have, if you're looking for something not as fast, but still PCI Express Gen 3, two terabytes, just 76 bucks. Finally, if you don't need two terabytes, you just want one terabyte, not super fast, but still pretty fast, PCI Express 3.0, we have the Team Group M.2 for just 44 bucks. Next, I have a really good deal on the mouse that I'm currently using. The G502 Hero. I really like this mouse and it's normally 80 bucks. Right now it's 50% off for just $39.89 on Amazon. And while this is the last deal that I'm showing here, I will say that there are a ton more. So make sure to check those links out in the description below. Next up for today, AMD recently announced their RX 7900 amp. This is a laptop card based on their highest Navi 31 GPU. And while they did originally share some benchmarks here, you can see it's saying an average of 7% faster than the RTX 4080. We actually now have some of our first third party benchmarks. As you can see right here by Gizmo Sliptech, this was actually done by an Alienware M18 laptop but they actually were able to run a 3D Mark Time Spy score, and as you can see, it got a graphic score of 19,743. And when we compare that to NVIDIA's laptop GPUs, we can see that it does actually beat out the RTX 4080. Now, it does still lose to the 4090 GPU, but it is pretty impressive. Don't forget that this GPU actually comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 across a 256-bit bus, so it does have quite a bit of GPU memory, and of course, with the current crop of games that have been coming out, that's really important. And next up, I've been talking about them left and right, but we're finally learning about the release date of NVIDIA's upcoming Super GPUs. Don't forget that so far we've learned performance, we've learned how many cores these GPUs get, and now we're finally learning the release date. As you can see, according to well-known leaker copite 7 Kimmy, he claims that these cards are set for release at CES of next year. So that means early in January, which means these GPUs are just a couple months away. As a quick recap on the information that we've gotten so far, you can see the 4080 Super comes with 10,240 CUDA cores, which is only, I believe, right around 5% more than the regular RTX 4080, but we've heard that pricing can be as low as $999. Now, it's really hard for me to say as low as $999, but given the fact that the regular 4080 released at more than that, it is a pretty good deal given how things are in the GPU landscape, but that obviously still is really expensive. I wish the prices would drop drastically, but obviously they aren't. Then we have the 4070 Ti Super. This one comes with 8,448 CUDA cores, which is a bit of a bump over the 4070 Ti's 7680. 
Finally is the 4070 Super, and this one has the biggest bump from 5,888 cores to 7,168. And of course, if they are able to keep the pricing right at or potentially even below the non-Super cards, this is a fairly decent upgrade just because it's effectively free performance. And of course, when we look at that 4080 Super, that's almost certainly set to compete with AMD's RX 7900 XTX. So I highly doubt they're going to price it really wildly bad or anything like that. It'll probably be at least what the 4080 is potentially even cheaper. And if they do go cheaper, AMD will almost certainly be forced to lower their pricing on the 7900 XTX as well. Basically, as always with strong competition, the only ones who win are the consumer. And lastly for today, I have sort of two different stories rolled into one. This is a really interesting story from Red Gaming Tech. If you remember not too long ago, this is actually an older benchmark that I discussed. This is a Cinebench 2024 benchmark for the Ryzen 8950X, and it actually didn't do all that great. It was something like 5% faster in single core versus the 7950X, so really wasn't much to write home about, and in multi-core, wasn't all that much better. Well, as I said then, this is still obviously an engineering sample, and apparently AMD has been getting things even better. Because the 8950X non-3D is scoring in Geekbench 6.2 around 3500 in single-threaded performance, and of course, as he states here, these results are either rounded up or rounded down, likely the closest, you know, if it's like 3,480, they'll just round it up to 35, but if it's 3,430, they'll round it down to 34. Either way, this one is right at 3,500 single threaded, and when we compare that to the 7950X, it's a serious boost. We're talking right around 20%. Then in multi-threading, it's getting around 24,000, which, as you can see, is right around 25% faster than the 7950X. So these are obviously significantly better than what we were seeing before, and honestly, even if they don't get any better, this is still really impressive for a new generation. Not only that, but later in the video, according to Red Gaming Tech, he was originally hearing that there may actually be a regression in clocks from the 7000 series to the 8000 series, but apparently AMD has been able to get past that, and now they're looking to get even higher clocks. So things should get even better than where it is here, yet here it's already really impressive. But the news doesn't stop there. As you can see down here, he also talks about AMD's Sarlacc. Don't forget that AMD's Sarlacc is the code name for the Ryzen, 8000 like really massive powerful APU that comes with a whopping 40 CUs of RDNA 3 or RDNA 3 plus I can't remember exactly but regardless we're talking 40 CUs and as you can see right here he actually claims that this 8955HX which is apparently what it's being called the engineering sample is performing similarly to a Ryzen 9 8950X so full desktop CPU at 95 watts in both Geekbench and Cinebench. But not only that, you can see performance in games is roughly similar to a Ryzen 9 8950X and an RX 6750 XT. Basically, AMD's next generation APUs are going to be just unbelievable. Now, obviously this is a Halo SKU, so there aren't really gonna be any SKUs other than this that are like this, but it is unbelievably impressive and effectively could destroy the lower end to even mid-range GPU market. Of course, we did hear that there has been a delay with that, and that obviously sucks, but when it does come, even if it's delayed, quite a bit, it's still going to be an absolute monster. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's upcoming monster APU, or are you more excited for their main desktop CPUs? And don't forget to check out all of those deals with the affiliate links down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!